you guys, Forrest here with the Foco Flow Show. And this week's episode, we are installing the Cane Creek DB inline and the Vault Spring. It's a progressive spring. It's gonna go in the Ritmo. And we're gonna go from air shock to coil shock for the first time. So really excited to see what kind of difference it makes. So without further ado, let's get out there and find that flow. guys quick explanation intro to this video is you probably saw my transition sentinel review video a couple of weeks ago and db inline he had a coil shock and it just felt so good on the trail made a difference compared to kind of what i've experienced i've got the dvo topaz air shock on the ritmo v2 i've had that for the entirety over a year that i've had that bike never been able to get it quite dialed in and so after feeling that coil shock did some research talked to some local buddies that ride a v2 with a coil and they ended up with recommending that cane creek the cane creek db inline so i'm really excited don't want to lose the progress progressiveness of the air shock you can put you know air uh you can put volume reducers into both the positive and the negative chamber there for the DVO. So we want to make sure we don't lose that. So I don't know. We're going to talk about quick highlights about how to install, remove the shock. Won't be a full tutorial, but give you an idea. Then we'll get right into the ride sequence, feedback, and review and thoughts. So I hope you enjoy that. Without further ado, let's get into the install. So installing the coil shock isn't terribly hard, but you do need to be aware of a couple of things. As you take it out of the box here and you're inspecting all of the pieces, including the clamp and of course the white vault spring that we are using on this coil shock. Also inspecting the hardware on the eyelets on the top and the bottom of the coil as it slides in there. And then you install the clamp and then slowly turn the preload dial on the top to make sure that it has a snug fit. Once you have the shock itself put together in a uh, satisfactory fashion, it's time to remove the old shock uh, that is currently on your bike and get ready to put on the new shock. Now, I have never uninstalled a shock before, but it isn't all of that tricky. Just make sure you take the air out of the shock with a shock pump first, and then using a regular hex key, you wanna make sure you break the bolts loose and then carefully using a torque wrench or those Allen keys again to loosen both eyelets completely removing the bolts that are holding the shock into place and then you should be able to quickly and easily remove the shock from the bike i have found it's easier to have the bike on the ground some people uh, advise you to tie the frame so it doesn't fall those are all good things to consider i didn't have any issue taking it apart by leaving it on the ground braced against the bike rack and once the shock is free, you want to inspect the mounting hardware on both eyelets and then compare it to the new shock that you want to install. For this Cane Creek coil, it took me a minute to figure out how to pry off the washers and the bearings and everything to make sure that we could get it out. And then things started to get even more interesting where it wasn't completely obvious how I was gonna get some of the mounting hardware out of the existing shock. It was going to be required to get a little bit creative. Of course, you can order specific bike shop tools to do this, but for me, I used a socket wrench set and those sockets and a brace anvil to push out the installed hardware on the existing shock and then install it on the new shock. This was a little nerve wracking at first and it required the assistance of another person to help hold the shock in place while I used the socket to push out the old hardware and then ultimately push in the new hardware. But happy to report everything went really, really well, got everything put back together with the correct spacing. And then we were able to take all of that from the stuff that did come out easily, push it into the new shock. All of this you can validate on the website before ordering a new shock and then you can get ready to bolt it back into the bike. That way you'll know the different spacing for the shock mounts are completely correct. And then it takes a little bit of finagling to slide it back in just as you uh, took out the old shock, lining it up, playing with the frame up and down just a little bit, and then sliding in the mounting hardware quickly so that it's set, but don't wrench it all the way down. Wait until the very, very end to use a torque wrench to spec into the correct torque specs. And from there, you should be able to take a few more seconds to adjust preload to where you think it's gonna be needed. And then you need to take some time to get it out on the trail and fine tune from there. So overall install was successful. And then we'll take it out on the trail and get a feel for what the ride initial feedbacks are on the coil shock. Starting out, coil, a little bit of flow.
little pop. Tight. Ooh. Stay clipped in. Hell through. On the gas. Not bad. Staying tight through here. Weird techie rock. Here we go. Whew. Like that a lot. Gravelly through and up. Good little flow. Good to get on the gas. Up, down. And so initial impressions on the coil shock is that it really gives you a lot of bike control without losing too much of the poppiness as you saw on that flowy trail that we did there at Blue Ridge School in the previous video. And then also giving you a lot of bike control without too much pedal bob in slow speed tech. So you'll see climbing through some rocks and roots and down and up on some technical stuff that you also see in a lot of the stuff here in Central Virginia. Uh, the bike control is great. Again, the Ripmo has that great progressive geometry to begin with and lends itself quite nicely to uh, a coil shock. So with that progressive spring, you're able to stay planted, stay on the gas and get through some of these technical sections, technical rocks and keeping the control. And in the end, that's really what you want to expect with a coil shock is planted bike feel control in the technical, chunky, rocky sections, as well as steep sections, um, some of the black diamond stuff that you're going to find in the mountains so that you have the type of bike control that allows you to stay planted, keep speed, and then power through sections where there's full compression or high speed chatter. And to give you another perspective of the Ripmo with the coil in action, let's climb on board with a cool GoPro mount right behind the shock to see it work through the cycle in that high speed chatter I was talking about. So as you can see, when you pedal hard, the platform of the coil shock and the Ritmo V2 really does support for good hard sprinting, but then you can see it work without ramping all the way through the travel, super progressive. So my initial thoughts, I've been on the coil, the Cane Creek DB inline for about two months now at the recording of this video. I'm really, really happy with it. I do think you have to work a little harder to pop off of certain areas where the air shock is a little springier, a little sprightlier, but I think the benefits outweigh the cost in my opinion. Staying planted to the ground, having more control through the fast, chundery, chattery sections that we encounter here in Charlottesville and in the George Washington National Forest is critical. So overall, I can highly recommend the Cane Creek coil uh, on the Ripmo V too, and I had a chance to ride a similar one on that transition uh, Sentinel that we wrote a few uh, weeks ago in a different video. So overall, it's not that hard of an install. It's a great option, especially with that progressive spring. I hope you found this video useful. Comment below if you have experience on different bikes or different coils, the ones that you like the less. There's a lot of really expensive ones out there that are even more tunable. This one has the options to tune a little bit and definitely get it dialed into your preferences. So hope you enjoyed this video. Let's get out there together and find that flow.